Hello YouTube, I wanted to make another short video, I don't know if it's gonna be short, but uh, that's my plan, uh, to show you my altimeter code in the, mm, not the second version, but a uh, different version of the heads, so this one I received the PCPs yesterday, and um, wanted to show you the code and talk about uh, a little bit about the library and what I did and what not. So first of all, uh, this is the PCB for this. Uh, it has a uh, room for the rotary encoder, obviously. I also found some potentiometers that I can use if the code doesn't use a rotary encoder but needs a potentiometer with the same uh, three pins on the bottom and the two pins to solder it for it to be uh, stable on here and on this board I did add the ADXL345 accelerometer chip over here and the BMP180 uh, chip which is here I know it's an older chip but uh, most code examples use still use this chip and uh, it's also a little bit bigger and easier to solder as these are both the uh, pins are underneath the chip itself so unfortunately I just made one to try and uh, I cannot show it but uh, actually I took it off from here this is the ADXL 348 uh, module and uh, at first I was scared to be honest I was scared to use these kind of chips because uh, you cannot see what's underneath and you put the solder paste on and I still do it manually I did not get stencils yet but I will soon so I thought of if I should use this board like behind the PCB or whatnot and uh, then said well why not I tried if it doesn't work if I can't get it to work I just switch to it or redesigned the PCB and I also took off the BMP 180 sensor off of here with a hot air station that I have and since I have quite a few modules like this I can actually at least use these up and don't have them sitting around I did actually also order uh, bare chips for the, the ADXL 348-45 chips the BMP, I cannot find them. I mean, these sensors are like uh, dirt cheap, but if you want to buy the chip itself, it costs like twice or three times as much. And uh, I'd rather take my chances and desolder it and put it on the PCB and reflow it again. Uh, I did, did this on this here, and then I did have a problem with the BMP. It did show the pressure values. Uh, 10 times as much as they were normally are so the temperature showed correctly but the pressure sensor uh, the pressure reading was too high so I just took it off and uh, took one off here and reflowed it again here or oh, actually did it with the hot air of course and then it worked so I either did damage while taking off or maybe it didn't have the right connection or, or the Con connection wasn't right on the bottom so I don't know what it was but uh, on the second try it worked and I'm glad now of course that I did it this way so I don't have to uh, put the modules on the PCB and uh, when I grow up I want to use uh, 0603 SMDs as well right now I'm still using 0805 so this is the PCB, this is the back of it, uh, it has a speaker, it has the pins for LDR if I want to use it, it still has two touch sensors here and here, and then it obviously has the rotary encoder with the push button, and uh, this is how it looks like, from up close, uh, I did print a 3D Mm, a frame around the neopixels and put uh, thin C 
semi-clear piece of plastic like this one here actually this is the other half so this is underneath here and um, that keeps the LEDs the NeoPixels separated and diffused and there is nothing that can fall in here I will also order the front piece uh, in carbon fiber because I just like the look of carbon fiber on this one I still did not receive the carbon fibers and they are on the way for seven weeks now I hope they did not get lost and I also can show you the difference between dim display and full brightness so this is full brightness at 255 and this is dimmed at 10 I can go as low as a 1 and I can go to 0 then it's off of course so this is 10 this is 255 so you can see it uh, uh, side by side and this one is uh, will be the remote code a uh, two-way remote and uh, if you touch a button it comes on and then it dims again so that was that um, yes this is the PCB I'm not the PCB the heads altimeter code and I did show you the code before in a previous video Oh yes, and uh, don't ask me why, but while designing this PCB, I did go ahead and put the DC pin of the display on pin 12 on the Arduino on the 328 chip, and it did not work. The display did not work. It did not initialize, and first I wasn't sure if it was my fault, if I damaged something or have a mistake somewhere on the PCB which can happen um, while trying to get it to work I tried uh, different codes and then I noticed that with a different library it does work as you can see here obviously it works so this is actually now running the regular Ad Arduino uh, slash ST7789 library and what I normally use over here for example uh, this is the Arduino stash ST7789 fast library that uh, Pavel, Pavel, I'm sorry Pavel probably uh, from Poland did the library redid the library and uh, this one is like twice as fast as this one uh, on this code it doesn't matter because the update doesn't happen that fast that you need a large ref uh, refresh rate so it will work I mean it does work obviously um, I also did make a mistake and uh, I forgot to add the caps for the rotary encoder for debouncing but uh, I'm just pulling the pins high in the software in the code and it does work without any problems and there's also a library called uh, click encoder library which has even a fast acceleration mode and a regular mode and uh, does um, read the clicks with button clicked and button released so you can use those and um, I will put the links into the description and uh, so it still does work without problems but of course I will redo the PCB I will change the pin back to what I had on the other ones and uh, will redo the PCB and the ones I got they're just gonna be getting added to my stack of non-used PCBs I guess but for the altimeter code I still can use it so if anybody wants to get the altimeter because I had some uh, requests and questions about it so uh, you can get it uh, the USB charging is over here and here you have the on off button and uh, what actually happened to me on the while I was designing the frame for the square version uh, while putting it on or actually putting it on it went okay but while taking it off I ripped off the plastic nub of the on off switch because it was too tight and uh, then I figured I have to find another way 
and first I thought of splitting the frame into two pieces on this line so I have bottom half and top half but then I figured it's gonna leave a visible line and might not uh, match up and whatnot and then I said well why I just don't cut it on the bottom so this is what I did here and I did the same here and then I replaced the on off switch here so it has a light I mean almost invisible gap I could uh, once I assemble it just put some um, super glue on that so it's not moving I mean this is held in by the top and the bottom uh, PCB it will be carbon fiber on the top and PCB on the back so it's squeezed in it's not going anywhere also the PCB goes right up to the edge of the 3d printed frame so it centers it and it, it holds it in place doesn't move it so let me show you real quick the other PCBs I have I guess it won't be that short of a video so this is the back plate for example and this one is two millimeters smaller all around one millimeter all around smaller and the frame that I'm printing is uh, almost a millimeter thick so that gives me the sensors uh, almost to the edge and they work beautifully no problems there and these are the holes of course they match up so that's that and I am also will share a link to my friend's video that he sent me today uh, he is designing a game a teaching game a math teaching game well you can look at the video and see it yourself uh, it will teach kids adding subtracting dividing and multiplying in a game like fashion and he's doing it for this so it will be or actually on this one because it's working with a rotary encoder so I will share the link and um, he has helped me actually with the clock code and um, he's gonna help me again because I'm still stuck I did change it to the color version I showed you this also before but I have a small uh, glitch that I need to fix so he's gonna help me on that too and I'm gonna send him this one I'm gonna send him this and I'm gonna send him this one also so he can upload code and try it instead of sending the code back and forth um, so that was that um, am I forgetting something mm. Oh, uh, now that I'm able to use the ADXL348 um, accelerometer chip, I also have designed um, the new color uh, canvas version in this smaller version. I have it with the big one. I'm sorry, I'm not well organized here. Uh, this is the color version with the 10 new pixels and the two touch sensors here So I made this also for this version in this uh, size uh, Again with uh, two touch sensors and uh, with five new pixels which will be on top of here uh, This one has them, but uh, I didn't drill holes in here because I'm still waiting like I said on the carbon fiber so I will have uh, the color can gauge mini or micro I'm not sure how I'm gonna call it I have to come up with shorter names um, it will also be available in this size and in this size and uh, one day also in a in the V gauge in the color V gauge the V stands for five so it has five displays and this also has, um, let me, while I'm at it, uh, this has four touch sensors. So this one, this, this, and this, the top two and the left and right uh, displays will be able to choose the, 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 the screen, whatever you like. And this one will be static unless I put another touch sensor somewhere, but uh, I don't think I'm going to redo this. 
so this one is coming up too again i'm waiting on the carbon fiber fronts i cannot finish them up um, yes that was that so i will put a link into the description to uh to the game uh from alex and it will be available uh, on here as soon as i can get this sent to him i still cannot ship out packages we called the post office today again and they even have no clue as to when I will be able to send out packages and um, it's messed up but uh, it is what it is I'm sure I'm not the only person um, dealing with the situation with the current situation so anyhow this is the altimeter and I really like this and as I showed you in the previous videos uh, I did also order back different back plates for the heads version that will make it uh, so you can use a 22 millimeter strap to put it on your wrist like a geek and uh, I also made one with a keychain hole so you can have it as a keychain on your keys or hang it around your neck or whatever you want to do with it um, I was gonna say something else I forgot oh yes so the clock strap or the clock back plate uh, you can just take the four screws out and replace it or on this one you will add it on here and you could even put this on your wrist and I have to say to my defense I have very thin twi uh, wrists see that it's not even six centimeters for my friends overseas it's about two inches and I know most guys have like really large wrist so if you're a geek and want to run around with this on your wrist I will do it just to uh, just because I can <laughs> so Yes, that was that. So I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on too many uh, orders. They did not come and um, I don't know when it's going to happen. So I also want to thank again to all my support supporters, be it to Patreon or PayPal or through my Banggood uh, affiliate links. Thank you. Uh, every little helps. And uh, I think this was it for now. So... Stay safe everybody and I talk to you in the next video. Take care.